if we're given these two functions here, taking their derivatives is, is going to be really easy for us. The derivative of f of x is just 2x, so that's just a simple power rule, and the derivative of g of x is just equal to 3. Okay, so really easy, more or less kid stuff. Let's look at something a little bit harder. So, what happens if we have f of g of x? So now a composite of the functions. We have f of g of x. Well, let's remind ourselves how exactly how this works. First of all, we any x's that we have for f, g of x is getting plugged into. So this g of x is getting plugged into this x up here. And, and the way I like to do this is just to remind myself, okay, whatever x's we had, I'm just going to leave some space for them. So we had x squared, so I'm, I'm just writing these parentheses in place of x, and then I, for, I'm just going to put g of x inside. And that's it. That's the composite function. What happens if we want to take its derivative, though? The derivative of this. Okay, well, we have something nice, and it's called the chain rule. The chain rule tells us that we want to take the derivative of the outside function. And then we're going to leave the inside function alone. And then we're going to multiply by the, by the derivative of the inside function. So again, that's the derivative of the outside, repeat the inside, multiply by the derivative of the inside. And what would that look like? Well, the, the derivative of the outside, we can think of this as a power rule. So this 2 comes down, and then we, we're going to leave the inside alone, but to complete the power rule, we would do 2 minus 1, which of course is just 1, and we don't even need to write a power of 1. But that is just the power rule, the 2 comes down. Okay, repeat the inside. So we're going to leave g of x alone. We're not going to touch it. And then we have to multiply by the derivative of the inside. And the derivative of 3x plus 1 is just 3. And that's our final answer. And once we simplify all of that, this simplifies down to 18x plus 6. So just doing the multiplication. Okay, so I want to show you something now. What if we started with a function, let's just call it h of x because this is a different example, I'm just using a different letter. What if we started with 3x plus 1 squared? And, and we didn't think of this as, as uh, uh, a composite of two functions. We just saw it as, as is and we weren't sure how to take its derivative. Well we could, in this, in this case, we could have just rewritten this as 3x plus 1 times 3x plus 1. And now we could, e could either do a product rule or we could actually multiply these together and, and get our answer. So let's do that. We could do 9x squared plus 6x plus 1. Th and then if we take the derivative, so h prime of x, we just do the power rule. We get 18x plus 6. So we got the same answer, which is what we expected because we, we took the derivative of of uh, the same exact function, 3x plus 1 all squared. So if we could do this, why do we need, why do we need this fancy chain rule up here? And I'll show you why. What if we had a function that looked something a little bit more complicated? What if we had a function that looked maybe like this? h of x is equal to 3x plus 1 to the hundredth power. Well now we have a problem because because the way we would have solved this before when we were doing the previous h of x example we actually did the multiplication. We did 3x plus 1 times 3x plus 1. But now we're gonna have to do that a hundred times in a row and that is going to be a very tedious task. So instead, we can just use, use uh, the chain rule on this by realizing that this is really one, one function inside of another. 
And that is really the, the trick to using the chain rule is reckoning, recognizing when one function is inside of another function. So let's do that. So, like I said, let me redraw those lines. This is one function inside of what you can think of as a power function. Or if you want, let me write this out real quick. f of x would be x to the 100, and g of x would still be 3x plus 1. And then when we do f of g of x, we'd get 3x plus 1 to the 100th power. So, anyways, let's, let's continue with the chain rule. We take the derivative of the outside function, so that's the power rule, the 100 comes down, and then 100 minus 1 is just 99. So that's the derivative of the outside, repeat the inside, times by the derivative of the inside. And the derivative of the inside, again, is just 3. So this just becomes 300 times 3x plus 1 to the 99th. Okay, so the chain rule lets us take something, the derivative of something that otherwise would have been really, really tedious to take the derivative of. And the, and the chain rule is actually really, 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 really useful.